Matthew thirteen fifty three to fifty six says Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished this parable these parables that he departed from there. When he had come to his own country he taught many in their synagogue so that they so they were astonished, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers jo James, Joseph, and Simon, and Judas, and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Where then did the man get all these things? Scripture, his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. And sisters, yeah, sisters. Jesus plainly had many brothers and sisters. The Roman Catholic idea of the uh, per perpetual virginity of Mary is in, in contradiction to the plain meaning of the Bible. It is the very ordinariness of Jesus' home background that causes the astonishment. John 6.42 where then, scripture, where then did this man get all these things? The reception of Jesus was not welcoming or friendly. They speak skeptically and will refer to the him only as this man. Matthew 57, 58. So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not worthy of Excuse me, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and his own house. Now, he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. So they were offended at him. When we think of how strongly Jesus is identified with Nazareth, Matthew chapter 2, 23 it is even more surprising to note that the people of Nazareth did not appreciate it. The success, the success and glory of Jesus seemed only to make them more resentful toward him. People got offended. People were offended by the gospel. And so a lot of times we as Christians think that we're not to offend people. We're not to, we got we got to be we got to got to do it a certain way, but that's people get offended, period. It doesn't matter what we say or do. The people are going to get offended. And we're not to worry about it. Not to worry about it. Jesus didn't worry about it. The prophet is not without honor. Except in his own country. In his own town house. We often have wrong ideas about what it means to be, a, to be spiritual. We often think that spiritual people will be much more strange, strange than normal. <clears throat> The closest to truly spiritual people see just how normal they are and sometimes think they are, aren't are spiritual because they are normal. Let's read that again. It says, We often have wrong ideas about what it means to be spiritual. We, have, we often think that spiritual people will be much more strange than normal. Therefore, the closest to true, truly spiritual people see, right, the closest, the ones that are closest to them, people see how much normal they are and sometimes think they aren't, aren't spiritual because they are normal. So when they seen Jesus and they seen how normal he was as a person, they couldn't see, they couldn't understand how spiritual he was. They seen him as a child growing up. Right? And then he's over there healing people all of a sudden. And then he's talking normal. And they spe we, we sometimes think of spirituality as weird. Like wizards and stuff. And, and that's what... That's our own idea, right? So it's saying the people closest to him couldn't... It was strange to see a normal person be so spiritual, but yet be normal. Scripture, he did not many, 
He did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. It is truly remarkable that Jesus was in some manner limited by their unbelief. As long as God chooses to work in concert with human agency developing our ability to partner with him, our unbelief can and may, and may hinder the work of God. So we have a participation, we have an active participation in God's will. We are called to be partakers in it. And if we don't want to be partakers and we, we don't believe, we, we, we don't believe God, God, God doesn't have to do anything, right? Because of our unbelief. So faith is the size of a mustard seed, right? Can move mountains, right? So it's not that he couldn't do it. It's that he, he didn't do it, right? Because it says, right? It says, uh, now he did not do many mighty works. Right? He did not do many mighty works. So a lot of times it says he couldn't. It wasn't that he couldn't, like, as, as, it wasn't that he couldn't do it because he's not God. Is that he couldn't do it because they didn't believe. Like, I, the father's like, don't don't bother don't bother it don't even we as people as even believers sometimes we won't believe and therefore God will be like don't waste your time don't waste your time they no matter how many mighty works you do they're still going to be skeptical no matter how many people you heal they're still going to find fault in you no matter how many people you raise the dead, they're still going to say your spirit of Beelzebub. We overestimate the power of miracles and thinking that the power of miracles is going to change people's hearts. And that's not always the case. God already knows. So he didn't perform many mighty works. Right? So when we read scripture, sometimes it says uh, in some of the transla translations, transliterations that he could not but it wasn't that he could didn't do it because he's not God it was that he's God but the father told him don't do it so he couldn't do it he's obedient to the father right so he's already knowing who's going to believe and who's not so don't even bother doing any more mighty works right but it says he did not do many mighty works so he did some and so it's not that he didn't do none, it's that he did some, and it showed, right, by the reaction that they weren't going to receive it. So the father said, hey, let it go. And he's like, I'm not doing no more. It's just a waste of time. So, what is our active participation is our faith and belief, right, and to follow the Lord and to not question what he's doing. Right, questioning with an open heart is one thing. Questioning as you don't believe, like I, why you do that? I don't understand. You, there's a difference between why you, why is this happening? Like, is that are you Lord? Like, open heart. I'm trying to, I'm trying to come up with a way to uh, express it, but an open-hearted question compared to a closed, hardened heart question. Right, you're not asking. You're not. Believing, you're more criticism and, and, and denial. So I wanted to point out too, it says in his mother, is this, is not his mother Mary, called Mary and his brother James, Joseph, Simon, and jo Judas, and his sisters, he had sisters. So what are we saying, right? Mary wasn't a virgin after Jesus. And the Catholics, they try to make it like she's a, a virgin, like she only had Jesus, and that's not true. She had many kids. Her and Joseph were normal people, right? They got married, so they had many children, right? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with Mary having more children and having marital sexual relationship with her husband, right? There's nothing wrong. When you marry, you should not defile, right? So, so I just want to make a point that uh, Christians love Mary. We love James, Joseph. We love Simon. We love Peter, like, 
We love all all the saints. They're all saints. We're all you're a saint. If you're a believer, you're a saint. We love you. But it doesn't mean that Mary is more highly honored than anybody else. John the Baptist and Elijah and like we're all gonna be in, in eternal life, right? But she's asleep in Christ. Christ is her God. Jesus is her God. We need to get that straight. Jesus is the God of Mary. When he's on the cross, he says, Behold your son. Behold your mother. He said, You're taking over as son because I'm your God. There's no other mediator between other than Christ Jesus between man and God. So I hope you got something out of it. Amen.